think what customer-centric practice design could mean for you. Um, and, and, and we have a good examples of, of not, not you know, coming up with this stuff. Uh, Henry Ford, uh, you know, what he wanted really to do is, is to give you a car, any car, as long as it's black. But um, <laughs> if you ask people what they wanted, they really amplify the existing, existing paradigm. And what we see actually is, is, is in the mobile phone is, is this kind of incremental development, a little bit better mousetrap, rather than being really disruptive, really rethinking the whole practices of, of what we are doing. So you might be now wondering, what, what, the, what, are, what is this guy rambling about, really? Because we are here talking about social media and, and mobile. This has everything to do with, with social media in the mobile. Because I'm, I'm asked to sort of talk about the next wave in the program. So let's look at the next wave. So what could it, for example, be? Um, if we think of our senses, you know, we have hearing, we have vision, we have, we have touch, we have all these cool senses. The, the sixth sense, the women have, the don't, women don't have, um, is now available for men also, so, uh, from MIT. Um, and, and it, it, you know, like men, we need all kinds of gadgets to uh, sort of come over our limitations. So you have a mobile phone there in your pocket, and you have a, it connected to a video projector and a mirror, and you have a webcam here that sees what's in front of you, and you have colored caps. How many of you have seen this um, thing before? Okay, it's good. So I, I'll show you a little video of what Patty Mass and Prana Mystery have done at the MIT Media Lab. So here's a guy. Um, okay, he's not doing anything. Okay, so he's in a library and he picks up a book and it immediately recognizes which book it, book it is and shows you from Amazon its four stars. Okay, it opens up the, the inside cover page and it gives you out, out, out some comments on what people are actually saying about the book in Amazon. If you browse through a little bit, you see something interesting. There's a, a contextual indicator that you can click on it and it starts to download some narration from Wikipedia, for example, right into your earphones. Okay, reading the newspaper, and the news is on, uh, always up to date, of course. And um, when you go to a conference like this, where you meet people, you might be wondering, you know, what is this guy all about? And that's, uh, that's the easy way of doing it. Okay, so it's obvious that this kind of technology, well, uh, it's, it's cheap and it's available. It can be built for $300. It will be available soon, but not probably not with a video projector. You know, you go to a conference and you meet someone <laughs> like this and, and it shoot right into their eye. So probably it's going to be the next generation of, of, of mobile technologies that are like glasses or something like this. But this, this really points to an incredible exponential speed at how things really develop. If you, if you look at the different medias, you know, 500 years from print that really revolutionized things and, and set the uh, industrial revolution in the, in the motion. Now we have like mobile has existed for over 10 years. And uh, Tomi Ahonen talks in, in his book Digital Core about the different things that this mobile actually does that, that they, they, the previous ones don't. Like the mobile phone is the first personal mass media in a way. Uh, the mobile is a permanently carried media. It's always with you. It's something you wake up in, and, and you look at and it's the last thing you look at when you go to sleep. It's the only mass media with a built-in payment system. So, so uh, it's, it's going to be really easy with, let's say, Nokia money to do payments. Uh, 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 micropayments instantaneously. Um, mobile is the only media available at the point of creative inspiration. So what it means is that when you have your mobile with you, you see an interesting situation, you know, a president is killed uh, in a crowd. You can start filming right away. If that technology was available when John F. Kennedy was, was murdered, you know, we would have much more citizen media recordings available. <coughs> So that means that you know traditional media is, is, is transforming to more like something that remixes things that people do because they cannot even step on an airplane when things start to happen. 
it's, it's pretty accurate for audience measurement. So you really, really see how people are doing and clicking and, and things like this. And what's interesting is it captures the social content, the context of, of, of media uh, usage and consumption. And that's something I would like to talk about a little bit more. Um, I have some, I have some friends in in Amsterdam who are working on on some really interesting technology from uh, Zet Games or SBRX Mobile. Raimo van der Klein, who used to run Mobile van der Amsterdam, actually, what he talks about is the three different eras of Mobile. The first era, era was really about communication, about calling and different things like doing with that. But the interesting stuff happened with the dot-com boom when we started looking at the mobile with, with web and different kind of technologies. So how to bring some interesting content based on people's interests in there. But that's quite static. And it, it's, 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 it's not that interesting uh, to use it as a sort of uh, end point for delivering, let's say, marketing messages. Even more interesting is the context in which the phone is and what you can do with that. So that becomes more dynamic. The context is based on services and activities. So that's why I was talking about, uh, about services in the, in the first step. So context is about doing and relating with the outside world and with other people. And let's take a look at some, some of the stuff that these guys are, are working on right now. Come on, Raimo, show us. I've been working on this thing of layer. Okay, the ordinary reality with fifth sen five senses. And then you come up with your sixth sense and you start going around and you see there's a house for sale. So it layers on top of the camera really in real time. It knows where you are, it knows where you're pointing, it, it shows you. <coughs> so it gives some contextual information that would be quite hard to just pick up the phone and Google. So let's see some more additional information of this thing. Of course there could be like comments and ratings and all these things already available for restaurants, for example. 